specific volume is a thermodynamic property and it's defined as lowercase v or lowercase greek letter nu and it's the ratio of volume to mass or v over m so that is our definition of specific volume um, it can have units of meters cubed per kilogram, centimeters cubed per gram, uh, feet cubed per pound mass. Essentially, we just have units of volume in the numerator and units of mass in the denominator. Now, specific volume is very closely related to density. Density is Greek letter rho, and density is the ratio of mass to volume. So it's exactly the reciprocal of the specific volume. So it's m over v or 1 over uh, specific volume. So in thermodynamics, something else to keep in mind is that this term specific uh, is sometimes used To mean per unit mass. So anytime you have a property that's divided by mass, it's called uh, specific. So if you have internal energy, it would be represented by capital letter U in many textbooks. Um, and if you throw specific in front of that description, that gives you lowercase uh, letter u. And so instead of units of kilojoules, now I have units of kilojoules per kilogram. So it kind of generalizes the problem because it's on a, a per unit mass basis. It's not tied to the particular mass of a problem. So why is a, a property like specific volume useful in thermodynamics. Um, well, let's see, we, we looked at another example um, where we said the density of water is approximately 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, and this is, it's important to note, this is liquid water. And we want to compare that with the density of solid water or ice which we'll say is approximately 920 kilograms per meter cubed. And so if I want to determine the specific volume of liquid water, then all I have to do is divide by the density. So 1 over 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The, uh, so this gives me 0 0.001 and the units get flipped, so I have meters cubed per kilogram. And I can compare that with the specific volume of solid water or ice. So I have 1 over 920 kilograms per meter cubed. So that gives me 0 0.0011 meters cubed per kilogram. So you can imagine if I have one kilogram, this is like saying 0 0.001 over one or 0 0.001 over one. So liquid water requires 0 0.001 meters cubed per kilogram of H2O. When it's in its solid, when it's in its solid phase, as opposed to the liquid phase, when it's in its solid phase, it requires slightly more space. It gets bigger. Um, it expands. And this is something we've probably all seen, right? So water expands when it freezes. And this is actually a kind of a unique property of water. A lot of substances uh, don't expand when they freeze. They actually contract. Right, so why, why are properties useful and important in thermodynamics and one thing that we can see from this example is that 
the properties are related to the phase of a substance. So the, the thermodynamic properties, and I'm going to just write properties for short. So the properties are related to, or I'm going to say they, they describe the phase of the substance. Describe phase. And phase is, is related to energy content. And phase change is related to energy transfer. And we know thermodynamics is all about energy transfer and energy transformation. For an example, let's consider a steam turbine. And it's usually kind of drawn like a megaphone in most textbooks, um, where you have, uh, if this is, if this were the boundary line, then at the inlet, you have uh, water as a gas entering the turbine, and that has temp some temperature, some pressure, some specific volume, and some energy content associated with it. And the turbine is going to convert uh, the pressure and the energy in the gas uh, into a rotational kinetic motion. Um, and then usually that turbine is connected, it's got a shaft that rotates, um, and that's going to be connected to a generator. And the generator converts that rotational motion, that kinetic energy, into electric energy. And so we've got this energy transformation process, and it all starts with the water going through the, through the turbine. Um, and when the water exits the turbine, it's probably going to be a mixture, a mixture of gas and liquid phases. And so this is really sort of illustrative of how phase and properties are related because uh, we can think of, we know, we know the different phases. So solid would be ice, liquid, gas. These are the three phases of matter of primary, primary interest in most thermodynamic applications. And these phases are sort of proxies for energy or energy content. So lower energy, lower temperatures uh, are associated with solids. And as the energy increases, it's going to become a liquid. So if, you, if we're talking about water, it's ice, it'll melt. And then as you continue to add energy, uh, it'll boil and it'll become a gas. So we have lower levels of energy associated with solid phases and much higher levels of energy associated with gas. And we use thermodynamic properties to help determine um, the phase and the energy content of whatever the substance is that, that we're using to, to help transfer energy.